Let's turn for a moment to an excerpt of The Battle for Paradise, a new short documentary by Naomi Klein and The Intercept. Tonight, Maria's direct hit, devastating Puerto Rico. The biggest catastrophe in Puerto Rican history. Evacuate or die. Puerto Rico is una zona de desastre. Oh, desastre natural. Desastre. I've been reporting on large-scale disasters for two decades. Superstorms, wars, economic meltdowns. My focus is less on the fact of these shocks than on how they are so often exploited. How governments, corporations, and investors have learned to take advantage of the desperation and distraction in the aftermath of these events to push through radical policies, privatization, deregulation, and austerity laws that remake societies in the interests of a tiny elite. I saw it happen in Iraq after the U.S. invasion, when the country was treated as a blank canvas for libertarian fantasies, and again in New Orleans after Hurricane okay. Katrina, when the storm became the excuse to rapidly shut down public schools and public housing and replace them with more profitable alternatives. Even before Hurricane Maria made landfall in September of 2017, many Puerto Ricans worried about another episode of this long story, about how the storm could be used to attack their austerity-starved public services and to snap up damaged beachfront property on the cheap. As you can imagine, we were all taken by surprise. Margaret Peña Juvelier of South Beach. Um, at the magnitude of this storm. Initially, in those first couple of days, we felt that perhaps this whole business would be wiped out. I can speak to the luxury side. And surprisingly enough, we did not see any loss of interest in the marketplace. Welcome to Dorado Beaches. We have here a double high ceiling in the living room. Let's see the garden, because the magic of this house is the garden. You see there's a level of sophistication, yet um, Caribbean flair. So are you hearing from people who think they can get a good deal in Puerto Rico because of the hurricane? Absolutely, everybody. We call it pre-Maria, post-Maria. There's been a lot of talk about disaster capitalism here in Puerto Rico and in many places in the world that have been hit by disasters uh, in recent years. What makes Puerto Rico different? This One is Rutgers University. One of the particularities of Puerto Rico is that this major historic storm occurs on top of an already existing major historic economic crisis. People were already in a kind of state of shock and a severe economic policies were already being applied. So what are the ways that a crisis like this can be profitable? As you know, and these, as you've written about, in these moments, a lot of things are suspended, expectations are, are changed, and so laws can be passed and things can be put into place that would have otherwise not been acceptable. And I think right now the main thing that was already that was already on the horizon is going to be the privatization of public services. So uh, some speculate that part of why the electricity company has been so slow in getting back up is that they're preparing for privatization of all of it. Things also like a uh, public uh, transportation system, all of those services that were already weakened, had already been disinvested from by the government because of the financial crisis, it's to be expected that all of them are probably going to be sold, and they'll probably be sold at a very low price, because now they can say, oh, because of Maria, everything is devastated, everything is broken. It has been the most devastating natural disaster over the last 100 years. Puerto Rico's so Commerce Secretary Manuel Lavoie. Uh, uh, infrastructure uh, suffered, uh, telecommunications suffered. Now, um, I believe that that can be seen as a silver lining opportunity. Deseo informarte. I wish to inform you of one of the highest impact initiatives for building a new and modern Puerto Rico, the transformation of our energy system. Governor Rocio. Over the next few days, a process will begin where PREPA's assets will be sold to the companies that will transform the power generation system into a modern, efficient, and less costly system for our people. I met with the governor just after the hurricane. This and is the CEO said, of Isla Verde Hotel Group, Keith Wilkins, St. Clair. And I said, Claire. I'm going to double down, I'm going to treble down, I'm going to quadruple down, because I believe in Puerto Rico. 
This is Isla Verde Beach, and to me, this is the finest urban beach in the, in the Western Hemisphere. This is the new pool that we're putting in. We're building a new beach bar and restaurant. You'll see next door there's a new hotel. There'll be another new hotel on the point. Really what the government is doing and has the chance to do is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to repair and rebuild the infrastructure of the island. And if the infrastructure is built well, if the electricity, the roads, the water is taken to 21st century levels, that can only help us all. The big question hanging over the reconstruction is this. Who is Puerto Rico for? Is it for Puerto Ricans? Or is it for outside investors and tourists? And after a collective trauma like Hurricane Maria, who has the right to make these fateful decisions? Because many Puerto Ricans have their own ideas about how to replace their shattered infrastructure. And it isn't about selling it off for profit. It's about reimagining how the island generates energy, feeds itself, teaches its kids, and heals its sick. A people's recovery. And like the shock doctrine, it was already underway before Maria. This is Casa, Casa Pueblo, Pueblo is our community-based organization with 38 years of history defending our national territory. We have a commitment towards sustainable development. Solar power is our first and sole energy source. We were just a few in 1999 when we started with solar power. And all of a sudden, Casa Pueblo, after the hurricane, was still running. Hello. So people came here. Uh, right after the hurricane to recharge their equipment. People came here with their equipment for respiratory therapy. This was an energy oasis for the community. Immediately after the hurricane, we distributed over 10,000 solar lamps to improve quality of life for the people. Now we have houses asking us for support and we want to help people unplug from the grid, from fossil fuel. We should embrace a transition to clean energy sources. Solar is one. We have plenty of wind. We have water power. Uh, we have plenty of biomass that can be used uh, uh, as a source of energy to run our country. And I think Casa Pueblo, uh, what we're doing is not waiting for the government, not waiting for the U.S. Congress. There's a resistance from everywhere. So we're gonna do whatever is at reach to change that landscape and to tell the people of Puerto Rico that a different future is possible. Welcome to our farm. Here we are in Orocovis, the center of the island. It's beautiful work. Yeah, <laughs> it is beautiful. It is. And it's, it's green. It's green, yeah. We'd heard that there had been so much damage to the forest, but four well, months later... Well, it's, it, it was like a fire, like a fire had uh, passed. Uh, but now it's, um, it's, well, we're in, in shape. And that last speaker, Farm School Director Dama Cartagena, from the documentary The Battle for Paradise, a short doc by The Intercept, uh, featuring our guest Naomi Klein. It was directed by Lauren Feeney. Uh, Naomi, the author of the new book The Battle for Paradise, Puerto Rico Takes on the Disaster Capitalists, sits out today. She's launching it at Cooper Union, along with our other guests, who will rejoin in a moment. 